I just gave away a copy of one of my favorite books to one of my closest friends. This book is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. The book itself highlights the different forms of resistance faced by different people, artists, entrepreneurs, whatever it is. They all surround one idea, and that is the idea of resistance, the idea of a entity or something that holds you back. Let's investigate this identity. Stephen Pressfield was the first person to cultivate this idea of resistance being the source of people's pain. And in fact, this was the reason that people became very intrigued with Stephen Pressfield and his book, The Art of War. This is why it became critically acclaimed, award-winning, best-selling. Stephen himself is an American author born on the 1st of September, 1943, in the port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago. He has some of the most amazing art or pieces of art that I've ever read myself. Some of his most notable pieces of art and some of my personal favorites include The Warrior Ethos, Turning Pro, The Virtue of War, and of course The Art of War. These, these pieces have obsessed my life. I've, I've constantly just had these within a an arm reach within me, you know, within my circle. Because I feel like I learned a lot from Stephen Pressfield as an author, as a person, just going through his biography and, and how he grew up living life in Trinidad and Sobego, going to America and being an, a writer and, and, and going into screen and being a screenwriter in, in, in Hollywood. It really is um, a really incredible story. So you should look into his story before we get into this. But um, I want to look more into what resistance is. Instead of telling you what resistance is from my perspective, I thought it would be more interesting to call my best friend, Luigi, and he can break down what he learned resistance is as he just got the book. And he comes from the perspective of someone who doesn't necessarily read that much because they don't really have that much time but they do get into a lot of reading and they do want to read a lot more so he would be able to level with you and explain how the book is and how easy or how difficult it is for for people or for beginners to understand and to get to grasp the concepts within this book right bro so um what in your words from what you've read already so far is resistance well, geez, in my words, it's a little bit difficult to put, but I like to put it in Stephen Pressfield's words. Stephen Pressfield describes resistance as the most toxic force on the planet. Stephen Pressfield says that resistance is this faceless enemy that stands between us and our destiny. And this is the thing about resistance, AJ. You gotta, you gotta consider the fact that resistance is not something that's gonna come and stop you from setting a goal. Mm. Let's say you want to get a six pack, a six pack of abs. It's a good goal. Resistance comes in and stands when you're like, oh, I can't sit on this cold, hard floor. Cold, yeah. Wait, gym, with, where there's judgmental chads with their chests out. Yeah, yeah. That's when resistance comes and implants these ideas in your head that you can't yeah. do this step that takes you to the next level. Of course, exactly. And, and I feel like, I think resistance comes mostly in the form of excuses in the form of procrastination, in the form of persistent bad habits, in the form of bad relationships and bad friendships and all these things that really don't add to your life. These are these are the, the toxic forms that it does. And it comes with one goal, to get its job done, to get you to not reach that next level, bro. That's crazy, man. One of the most interesting forms of resistance that Stephen Pressfield brought up to me in the book was resistance by rationaliza rationalization, which is quite a scary thing because oftentimes I think when we try not to achieve something, we rationalize it. We give ourselves the excuses not to do it. We say, oh, oh, I just came from this flight, you know, I'm tired, let me, let me nap. I'm, I'm super tired, it was a long flight. You have the energy to work, you just chose not to, but you rationalized it due to the idea that you are tired. You've been convinced to believe that you deserve this rest, but you got to get yourself out of that mindset. And that's that's how you remove resistance from your life. When you begin to combat these active thoughts that come to you and try to stop you from achieving what it is that you wish to achieve. Here are five sobering truths about resistance that are critical. No, absolutely crucial to you overcoming it. For the first one, I want to give you a weird example. An example that will remain in your head. One that is probably going to scar you, but will remain in your head. And that is the example of the grasshopper hairworm. 
spin spino cordordes tele oh lord help me these parasites are harmless to humans, but they do affect grasshoppers. And the reason I bring it up is because of this. What they do is they go inside water sources, whatever water source there is, um, be it a pond, a little puddle, a lake, whatever it is, and they chill there until a grasshopper, an unsuspecting grasshopper comes and jumps along and gets into the water and it goes into the grasshopper and it pumps out chemicals that inhibit the grasshopper in its brain it stops the grasshopper's own volition so it basically forces the grasshopper to act without its own will and so this parasite pumping cocktails of different chemicals into the grasshopper's brain forces the grasshopper to jump into the nearest water source you know within its its vicinity and die the grasshopper itself would die but it would enable the parasite to come out of which it does it comes out the rear of the grasshopper's dead body and it mates with other parasites inside that water now i know this is a very gruesome sight to see like it gave me like the heebie-jeebies when i was researching about this but it's important because i really think it's a good idea of what resistance is resistance is a parasite and the reason I bring it up is because number one, resistance is inside of you and it comes from inside of you. You create, sustain and perpetuate resistance regardless of your external struggles. Yes, you don't have money, but resistance is the thing stopping you from taking those first steps to even finding a job or to even doing what you can to offer a service to get money of some sort. Resistance is the thing that's stopping you from taking those first steps to reaching those goals. The second truth about resistance is that resistance is sly and cunning. I remember sitting with my dad and discussing the idea of the devil. You know, as a kid, I've always been scared of the devil. If you've grown up in a Christian household, even a Muslim household or a Jewish household or a, a, a Hindu, whatever religion, and you, you believe in like an evil spirit, a devil, an, 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 an enemy entity um, that is pursuing you and constantly trying to attack you and harm you, you would, you as a kid would have that type of animosity and that that more um uh you you do believe you're a child of god and you're protected by the blood of jesus and you are um away from that and one thing that my dad said is that you know a lot of people try when they do uh rebuke the enemy they don't consider the fact or they under blow the fact that the, the enemy is intelligent you know you can call the enemy anything but stupid because the enemy knows what man what what the flesh wants the enemy knows how to manipulate things the second you give the enemy an opening the enemy sneaks in and the enemy uses it that's the same thing with resistance resistance is the most formidable opponent you can encounter it will lie manipulate deceive any way it can in order to get its goal it'll throw attack after attack in order to derail your destiny and the scarier part is that resistance knows you and it knows what you like and it knows exactly what to say in order to start to rationalize to get you to start to rationalize and to get you to start to backtrack and to get you to start to become apathetic to get you to not go to the gym to get you to not go and read that book to get you to not go and study to get you to not do whatever you're doing resistance knows what to say resistance knows how to act how to present itself it can come in the in the in the form of a attractive boy or girl it can come in the form of 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 a a, a an addiction to drugs an addiction to whatever your phone an addiction to whatever pro laziness sleeping whatever it is resistance knows you number three Everyone experiences resistance. Everyone experiences resistance. I don't even have to say this. This is a known fact. If you're a human being, you experience resistance. <sighs> so like, what is like some time you felt resistance? Like, um, the dark, like, just like lead me from like a point where you, to a point where you felt like at your lowest and resistance was at its most in a sense, or where you felt like a lot of resistance, you know, just to tell everyone that everyone feels resistance, you know, me, you, just to give your experience. Regarding my lowest point, I, I feel in recent times, uh, I had a football trial. I had football trials in Portugal with uh, a couple teams out there. And I went for my first session with one of the 
the, the better academies in uh, in Lisbon. And uh, after one training session, I felt really sick. I found myself with appendicitis, uh, having to get having to get surgery, the emergency surgery the next day. And uh, I won't lie, it was pretty. It was pretty tough. It was pretty tough on the soul. Pretty tough mentally. I couldn't do my trials anymore. Bro, I had to. And like, and like you're you're like, you know, for for those out there that don't know, like. Luigi, you're like obsessed with soccer. Like soccer is like your thing. Football, my bad. I I'm saying soccer. I know it's it's football. Football is like your thing, bro. And it's it's you know your family is also like quite football oriented. Your 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 little brother plays football. Your dad loves football as well. You know, um, so it was really tough for you. You know, not being able to go to trials and, and all of that. Hundred percent. It's like I had I had mentally convinced myself that. This was the point in which my career would be taken to the next level. And when that sickness, that illness came in and just put, an, uh, put a bit of an end to that period of trials, I was completely demoralized. I had to return back to South Africa uh, to recover and then go back to my, to my previous team. When I was writing my book, my first book, Be Be Cool, The Ultimate Teenage Guide, I used to think, especially when I first started, um, the hardest part would be the start, getting used to the, the regimen of writing 5,000 words a day, you know, writing, having meetings with my research team or with my tutor to, and my editors and, you know, going to school as well and having all of that as a teenager and, and going and actually pursuing young people and, and, and building relationships, building up groups, Facebook groups with hundreds of kids and, and, and different networks and all that. I thought that would be the hardest part. No, that was not the hardest part at all. The most difficult part by far of my book was the end. Ending the book, you know, pushing past that last form of resistance when resistance is at its most, actually finishing when you feel hopeless, when you get to that darkest pit, when they tell you you cannot publish this book because of the type of uh, paper, the type of paper you're printing out is uh, uh, not in stock and it's only going to be in stock six months away from the deadline you're supposed to print, bringing you bare problems, a lot of issues. So you would say that like resistance, um, resistance kind of was the strongest when you decided to do something about your situation and when like, like when you were about to, you know, when you're about to give up at the last point when like it matters the most that's when resistance is like the biggest that's when it's the strongest that's when it's the scariest that's when it really does its tactics of deceiving manipulating and all those things the hardest part in which resistance was really hitting me was in that recovery phase not so much uh the idea of me still wanting to play football i still wanted to play football but getting myself back onto that pitch, getting myself back into eating right, getting myself back into working out, that was the hardest part. And I kept telling, I kept telling myself, I kept telling myself that, uh, oh, I could, this, I, I could do this in a little bit later. I could do this a little bit later. I gotta, I, I still gotta recover. I still got recovery time, right? Doctor said I got two months. The truth is that my recovery actually came in faster. Uh, I was able to get onto the field um, about a month earlier than anticipated, but mentally I blocked myself. Mentally, I felt resistance. Resistance was beating me, it was beating my thoughts, it was beating my will to achieve my goal. I began to tell myself that I couldn't do this. And that form of resistance that tells you to give up, that form of resistance that tells you to quit, is the form of re resistance that hits the most. This is the form of resistance that is the strongest. The type that tells you right at the end, right when you're about to hit that next level, right when your life is about to change, that you should quit. When I was just about to take that final step, which was to get back onto the field and start training with my team again. The hardest part of all that was me telling myself that I wasn't ready to step onto that pitch. I felt so much resistance at that moment in time that just stopped me from going on to achieving what I wanted to achieve in that moment. My friend, if you've ever felt like you're in a situation where you've been uh, 
doing something, you know, you've been trying to do something for a really long time, whether it's starting a failing business right now or, or you know, trying to lose weight, but you're seeing no progress, whatever it is, resistance will always tell you to give up when you should keep going. In fact, use that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about using resistance as a a compass whenever you see resistance you attack it but before we do that we have to understand the truths about resistance we have to understand our enemy you see my friend resistance hunts you as long as you have one thing as long as you have a soul if you have a soul you probably have resistance if you have a soul and you've been through some life some sort of life experience some sort of um, hurdle then you probably have resistance you see my friend resistance is built through two things a soul or being a conscious or being a, a human being that is or uh, 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 capable of making their own decisions and reasoning and and learning and being conditioned and two going through certain things in life that form these beliefs certain things in life that form resistance resistance may come in the form of many different things but i want you to understand that everyone has resistance and everyone has experienced points where the resistance has really hit them at the bottom where they've been at lows externally but the resistance just completely pummeled them them internally as well. Truth number four, just as the hairworm parasite can only gain its strength through the use of the body of the grasshopper in order to reproduce and live on, I guess, through its kids and stuff, you create and give resistance its power. You give it its power. One thing you need to understand about resistance is resistance only starts to prowl and hunt when you're called for a higher purpose. Remember, you give birth to resistance through fear. Fear that is built through years and years of negative experience, social conditioning, negative social conditioning, and just general trauma. Your resistance is a reflection, whether you know it or not, is a reflection of your fears. Yes, you want a million dollar company, but do you really want the responsibility and the hard work that it takes to get there, to get to that point? Yes, you want to have abs, but do you want to really stick to the regimen of, of, of diets and exercise and, and commitment and self-discipline and cardio and all of that? On top of that, it comes from a deeper place. A place from not being enough. You have a fear of not being enough. We have this fear of we're not good enough to have that body. We're not good enough to have this million dollar company. That's why we say we don't, we really don't want these things. We really don't want the responsibilities where we should take joy in having the responsibilities in building a million dollar company. We should take joy in doing every single crunch, every single time we, we, we have to eat kale instead of KFC. We have to take joy in that because that's a part of the process and every successful person knows that the pain is a part of the process and in order to be successful in the first place you have to be obsessed with the process you have to love the process in every step it takes because it's a part of your vision it's a part of creating the person you want to become but something fundamental about resistance that you need to understand is the fact that the more you give into your fears the more you say, yeah, uh, you're right, I can't start a million dollar company, it's impossible. No one can start a million dollar company. Anyone that says, I can, I can make you a million dollars in a year, they are fake, phonies, lies. You can say that, but the more you give into your fears, the more resistance gains power over you. So you create resistance, you sustain it through going through more negative experiences and not breaking the loop, not changing your action, going through more traumatic experiences by keeping on to certain things that are low self-esteem, certain relationships you should let go of, certain people you don't need in your life anymore. And so you end up giving resistance more power because you end up falling into the fears of yesterday, the fears of the past, the fears of your childhood experiences, your traumas, your bad experiences, all that. Resistance will be its strongest when you're at the end. It's a truth of life. It is a fundamental truth. When you start something, you have the motivation, you have the energy, and let's say you stay consistent because you decide to actually focus on creating goals and you, you take everything step by step and you take right action and you keep going at it. But 
towards the end, you get to a point where it gets harder to keep moving. In fact, if we think of any goal or challenge as a mountain, let's say you want to write a book, you may start with the motivation at the bottom, looking up at the summit at the peak, and you're happy, you're excited, you have a vision, you have a goal, you can see yourself pla planting your, your a flag of achievement at the top. And let's say you start going. You start climbing, you know, you're going step by step, you still have few of the summits, you keep going and you're there. What you'll notice as you creep closer and closer to the end goal, to the summit, is that that vision that you have of the peak, of the summit, where you can see the goal and the plan and the vision, it disappears. All you see in front of you is work and all you see behind you is work and all you have to do is keep pushing because that's what resistance is. Resistance will come and will attack you strategically and it knows that you will be at your weakest at the end of the journey. Look, I didn't want to have to get to this point, but if I have to show you cringy Facebook memes in order to get my point across, I will. If you are pushing towards the end, is when you will have the most resistance. If you give up, that's when you won't reach your goals. And that's where 99% of people fail. That's why you see statistics in, 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 in things like Forex, where you have 10% of traders making more than 90% of traders. Or you have, you know, different things where a small group of people that actually push through make more or do more or have more or become better than the rest that didn't. Resistance is at its most powerful when you're just about to defeat it. That's all.